another best model in the world has been released. And yet again, there's numbers and facts and use cases to actually back that claim up. Opus 4.5, Claude's flagship model has been released and it is actually incredible. Especially for development focused tasks, it does things that didn't really work before. So I'm here to show you a bunch of examples of what it can do, what people have been doing. And the big question is, how does it compare to Gemini 3 Pro that last week claimed to be the best model for coding on planet Earth? <laughs> There's this funny little picture that I thought captured this also accurately. This is where we're at in a cycle. It's a tropics turn for introducing the world's most powerful model. And I'm here to tell you if it actually holds up. Let's get into it. So for anybody who's not informed, what are we talking about? Anthropic, one of the main competitors to both OpenAI's ChatGPT and Google's Gemini, came out with their biggest and baddest model, Opus 4.5. It's available now inside of their ChatGPT competitor, Claude.ai, and available through the API. It's also available in their various apps, although we're still waiting on the Claude Code one that should be there shortly for anybody using that application. Now, what's so special about this model and why are they making this big claim that it's the world's best model? Well, it basically completely crushed most benchmarks that matter for development. With standout numbers on things that I actually really care about, like computer use or agentic tool use or agentic coding. Basically all the applications like Claude Code or all the IDEs that use these models will immediately switch over to this because if you're not familiar, Basically, most of the vibe coding apps that exist out there, all of the lovables, replits, base 44s, all the apps that basically build apps for you without you having to code yourself, usually run on Anthropic models. And before this, they used Sonnet 4.5, and now this is the best model. So all of those just got a massive upgrade too with this release, because as I said, the model is not just available through the web app, Claude.ai, but also for the API, which if you're not familiar, is a way for developers to use these models in their applications. Now, these numbers are impressive, but as you know, a lot of this is marketing and what really matters is how do people feel about it? Are people actually using it? Are people enjoying it? In short, people are ecstatic about this. Me personally, for all the development -ish stuff that I play around with and that I use, if you watch the channel, you know that I always had a preference for the anthropic models. There's just something about the way they work, something about the way they fix errors, that is great. Now, every time I try Gemini model, I'm impressed. I'm like, wow, this works great too. It's just a bit different. It's just a different flavor. But flavor is something subjective. What is objective is not just these benchmarks, but also when you look into the real world and look at what real developers and what all of these applications that build code and build apps for you, what they actually use. I mean, that's the real world use case of these people putting them to work to save time and to improve their output or applications using these models under the hood. In that regard, the sentiment across the internet, I can tell you this, I've been following this closely since the day of its release, is extremely positive. I mean, basically the story over the last week went, wow, Google defrauded OpenAI's models and Anthropic's models with their new model. It's incredible. It's really good. And yeah, that was true. I demoed it last Friday. I showed you how it builds front ends. It's really impressive. We didn't go super in depth, but it was an upgrade to almost everything that we've seen before. But now Anthropic came around to take the crown back. And generally the sentiment on the internet is this, that yeah, they actually managed it. So let's have a look at some actual things that you can do and you can try by going to Claude and using Opus 4.5, which is available here. So I just want to start by running the prompt that I tried in last Friday's video, which is this one. Create a visually stunning design website for a studio that will impress web front-end developers. I'll make sure to turn on extended thinking so it has time to actually run this properly. And I should also note, last Friday, it's a bit of an unfair comparison because I didn't even run this in Gemini, the web app with the new free pro model, but I ran this in their new anti-gravity AI DE, which is basically like a agentic app that plans the projects and then executes on the plan. I personally was really impressed by that site. And in this little test, I kind of want to just see what front-end this comes up with and then we can get a first impression of the flavor of this model of what kind of front-end it thinks would impress a web front-end developer. As it does that, I also want to show you the progression of the Opus models on something they call Minecraft Bench, where they basically give the model access to a computer with Minecraft installed on it and then the models get to build buildings. This was Opus 4 building a pagoda garden scene. This is Opus 4.1 and here we have Opus 4.5. Improvements on all fronts, right? Again, just another way to capture the 
improvements of these models that are often marginal, but if you work with them, they actually do matter because they're often the difference between, well, creating something and then spending half an hour fixing something it does or it actually just working. As it writes this, I want to point out one more thing that I picked up all across the internet. And that's a fact that people really praise it for its ability to work with large code bases and fix bugs in them seamlessly. Whereas if you tried that before, very often that was a struggle. Okay, enough information. Let's actually have a look at this front end. And whoa, 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 whoa. This is actually beautiful. So look at that. First of the cursor is different. Okay, a lot of interactive elements. This is really apples to oranges. It is the same prompt and it says you a bit about the style. I love the grain that is overlaid here. One thing that I noticed right away is, wow, the cursor changes too, that's really cool, is that when I did it in Google Gemini, it actually generated the images with Nano Banana too and had them. This doesn't have that, but I mean, just in terms of design, I'm not a front-end designer, but I'm impressed. That's really good, actually, don't you think? I don't know. Again, it's just one prompt, hard to judge, but both super impressive models. Like, I guess it's subjective, but it's hard not to say that at the very least they're at the same level and extremely impressive. And again, this is running it in the web interface and the other one is a whole agentic tool that had like 10 minutes to plan through it and execute on all of it. And this just happened in the browser. Wow, next example. So to expand on the front end idea, here is a comparison from Ryan, I think that's how it's pronounced, over on Twitter, where he ran this prompt, a neo-brutalist web page that is extremely creative. And he ran the same thing through Opus 4.5 and Gemini Free Pro. Editors, make your magic happen. Expecto Patronum! You can see the comparison side by side here. And as you can see, they're very, very similar. I mean, if you really nitpick, you might even come to the conclusion, as Ryan came here, that Gemini is slightly better. I think if you really nitpick, well, maybe that's a fair statement, actually. See, he said maybe there's a 5 to 10% difference in kind of design. But when it came to complex logic within the website, it wrecked or destroyed Gemini 3. Now again, that's just one opinion, but I'm here to tell you that that opinion echoes across the internet right now. And people seem to really, really love Opus with large bodies of code and complex problems to solve. Hey, a quick note, if you're enjoying this content, make sure to leave a subscribe. It really helps the channel. And now let's look at the next example of what Opus 4.5 can do. Another quick example of Opus doing something incredible is actually it's building this cityscape in 3D with various cars driving through it and even stopping at red lights. And look at this car stopping at the red light, impressive. Isn't this incredible? Look, there's a day timer, you can move around, it's 3D, it's pretty good. And then there's also a comparison beneath it too of Claude Sonnet 3.7 doing the same thing. And I believe that model came out less than a year ago. And just look at that difference. It's not just the design, it's also kind of the behavior of every single actor there. Not a single car stops at a light. There's not even lights. And then I also want to show you this, where it creates SVGs. And we can actually try this ourselves, but you can see a comparison between Gemini 3 Pro creating SVGs here. And then the same prompts in Opus. I don't know about you, but that's more detailed. It's just better. Let's try this ourselves. Okay, I kind of like this prompt that I just came up with. Create an SVG of the Death Star in the sky above Los Angeles. For anybody not familiar, that is the evil mothership in Star Wars. But honestly, I feel like the viewers of this channel will know that already. Let's see how these two perform. Okay, so Gemini wrote the code, but it cannot display it for me. It's fine. We'll just open some random SVG viewer and look at it. This is what we got from Gemini. I'm not sure this really looks like Los Angeles. I do get the Death Star over there, though. That's good. And this is Opus 4.5, actually viewable in cloud. And yeah, I wouldn't exactly recognize LA here, but it's way more detailed. And even the Death Star is more detailed. Look at the shading, the gradients. Again, not a definitive test, but just another way to look at the capability and the potency and the power in these models. So wrapping up, I would say this. For me personally, I always loved the Anthropic models for developmental tasks. And some of these other players have been releasing models and they kind of took their crown in terms of benchmarks and people were flooding over there. But generally speaking, Speaking, not just the vibe coding apps, also a lot of individuals that I speak to usually preferred the cloud models for development. Now that they're back on top of the charts and they have the biggest and best model again, I would say there's a general preference for developers to actually use these models. Again, it depends. There's going to be people who like others and a lot of people are used to Gemini models. They're also super good. But now that cloud has the benchmarks again, there's no real reason for anybody with a preference for them anyway to use something else. When it comes to other departments like writing and reasoning, there's 
with barely visible changes. So I didn't even touch on them in this video. And I will also say that this upgrade to computer use is very exciting to me because Sonnet 4.5 was so incredible at it already. So I'll be playing with the browser extension to look into that a bit more. But overall, it's incredible at what pace these models are developing. And yeah, I myself will be using this all the time and it will be my new default when it comes to development. Always good to have a second tab open and see what the competition does. And at the end of the day, it's really easy to make an argument for why you're using Gemini or the new Codex model that came out this week. But yeah, they claim to be the best and it is really impressive. And now you know too. All right, my name is Igor and I hope you have a wonderful day.